What's up, everybody? Welcome to the live composing show. This is your host, Stephen Malin, here at the Video Game Music Alliance. Hope you're all doing fabulous today. This is a, an extremely busy week, very, very full, very fulfilling. Uh, just yesterday, we finished up some Budapest strings and brass recordings for Dark Dice. Many of you were there. And part of that conversation, out of that conversation in the live chat, um, one, of our, one of our friends, Micah, and a, a few others kind of jumped in the chat requested that once I get all the materials for these new Hitoshi Sakimoto tracks that I've been orchestrating and working with him on for Dark Dice, you know, can I show my process? Can I stream my, my process of what it looks like to open up a Pro Tools session and throw all of these ingredients together and put it together and make something awesome? So I obliged and I said, yeah, sure, let's do it. Um, I have to get this stuff done anyway, so I have to turn on a camera and, and talk a little bit about, about the process, that's totally fine. So we're doing three live streams this week, which is insane. Uh, it's just a very, very full week. So yesterday we had all the sessions. Today, obviously this, live mixing one of the tracks called Echo of Seasons, which um, this, at least this track, if not more tracks, um, as part of the Sakimoto collaboration, we're going to push for Grammy consideration since Grammy tracks and albums are due at the end of this month in August 2022. So this is the utmost priority for me right now. Aside from that, I have another video game project that I'm working on, an extremely large soundtrack that I'm, I'm starting the conceptual phase of, writing some main themes and trying to you know capture the sound. And as soon as I have permission and clearance to talk about that game and live stream with you guys, I absolutely will. So that is certainly coming uh, soon. And there's also another game I'm in talks with for later this year, quarter four, uh, which could be another large soundtrack. So it's just, there's so much going on in my world and it, it's super fun and I am so grateful, so thankful. But it's also, it's a bit stressful. So it's important to, um, you know, take some time away. And I did, I took some time away last week with family. Um, and that was nice, uh, more of an adventure, not a vacation so much, but an adventure with family to kind of get away from music and business and just kind of be with family and enjoy each other. That was super nice. Uh, I have five kids, so it's not exactly a vacation, if you know what I'm saying, uh, especially three little ones. But anyway, um, I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go. So uh, and just a little announcement. Uh, Thursday this week at our normal live composing show time at one, at what time do we do it? At 12 p.m. Sorry. The time has changed. 12 p.m. Eastern Standard. Uh, I'm going to be doing a Sea of Stars gameplay clip where we're going to be talking about one of my favorite plugins called Sample Tank. Uh, which is actually super duper on sale right now. So I'm going to be talking about that deal going on and why if you want to emulate the GameCube and PlayStation 1 era sound of the early 2000s, that is the tool that most of the composers used. And we'll talk through that. So it's an old plugin, but man, it's super fun. Uh, I think we're going to enjoy that process. So today we're going to laser focus in and I'll kind of talk through my process as I go. But if you've ever wondered what is it like to mix live orchestral music here we go. Um, I, I'm certainly no master of this craft. I've, I've truly only been doing this live orchestral thing for a handful of years. I like to think I'm, I'm good at it. Uh, I'm certainly getting better all the time. Um, I'm no Alan Meyerson, for example, but um, I think there are some basic principles and some basic technological things we can talk about today, which should be helpful for no matter where you're at in the and your, your skill level or your exposure to mixing. So one of my favorite things about mixing is it's the final stage. So however it sounds now is the final product. And I love taking all of these uh, soloists from around the world and combining them into this session and taking all of the, the strings, choir, brass recordings, putting them all together. Um, it's going to be so much fun. So I'm going to do my best to just start if you guys have questions throughout the process, please ask, and I will do my best to answer those. If it's anything not related to mixing, um, Matt Everett is in the live chat with us, and he can help. Um, but a quick little plug before we start, if you're not part of the Video Game Music Alliance yet, come join the wait list. I have a free guide called Secrets to My Six-Figure Video Game Music Business. It's, it's a $17 guide that you can get completely free by clicking on that link. Go join the wait list. And you'll be notified when we open up enrollment again in quarter four 
of this year. Um, so we're not open all the time. We're only open at certain points in the year to allow new people to really get acclimated into the community, get plugged in, see some results, have a blast meeting new folks and jumping into all the content and community activities that we do. So I actually considered doing this stream as part of the Video Game Music Alliance, but you know what? I just, I figured, man, everyone needs to have access to this information. I certainly had no access to any kind of orchestral mixing information, had to figure it all out my own and working with A-list composers and, and my internships and assistantships and things that I've done with uh, some really cool people. Uh, over the years, but man, uh, I've had to learn this the hard way. So I hope that you can take a little bit of a shortcut and learn some of the basics that I'll talk about here today. And uh, you can take that to the bank. So here we go. Let's dive in. So today we are in Pro Tools. Um, I may not put my face on the screen terribly much today because Pro Tools is not very good about window management. There's just so much crammed into one screen. So I'll do my best. Uh, I'll kind of pop in in here as we go, but uh, if you don't mind just listening to my voice today, I'm going to be doing a lot of pointing and clicking because there's just Pro Tools is so deep and so rich. So all I've done so far, and I've li literally done nothing. I just downloaded all the sessions. So I have the choir session, brass session, and string sessions. I have all of the WAV files from all of the soloists. And here we go. We're going to combine everything together. And this is our track called Echo of Seasons. So the way that the orchestra um, recorded if you went to any of the sessions, I know they were long, so no expectation for you to have sat through three or four hours of this stuff. But essentially, we usually record in four bar increments, sometimes longer, especially if we're short, short on time. We might just do one take of the whole dang piece like we did with the strings on the final track, Unchecked Ambition. We literally did a five-minute take for a five-minute track, and it was 80% awesome. And so I'll have to go back and edit some stuff. But um, you know, in this situation... We're dealing with just multiple retakes of little four bar phrases, two bar phrases, and they do an amazing job with Museversal, their editing team, their Pro Tools guy, whoever's manning it, uh, does a phenomenal job of separating overdubs from the main recording. So what we're looking at right now, all the blue tracks are already grouped together. So when I click up here, let's grab the tool, my favorite tool up here there we go if you hit escape on your keyboard you can grab all of the tools at once which is super helpful and i'm also going to use the tilde key on my computer keyboard to switch to slip mode um, and so now i can just freely select stuff down here you'll notice all of the original tracking is captured right here so it just means that these are all of the strings that played the first take and then there's the next one, there's the next one, and they're all ready because the Pro Tools guys are awesome. They, they already just do a global um, crossfade between all of the takes, usually, and they already do some basic choppings. It's just a whole lot less work than what I have to do, so highly, highly recommend recording with Museversal because they're just so freaking pro at everything they do, and they have a dedicated person doing everything, so uh, that's the strings. Down here, we have OD, which stands for overdubs, if you really want to get granular, you can actually see all the different mics. So we have tree mic left, tree center, tree right. The out rigger, we have left stereo, right stereo. So it's one stereo track right there. That's a different microphone. And then every section has multiple mics. So the violin one section has three mics. One, two, three. Violin two, one, two, three. Viola, one, two, three. Cello, one, and two. And double bass, one, and two. So it's a super organized an incredible mic system right out of the box it's going to sound phenomenal let me just play something well i guess we're not gonna have volume just yet i haven't routed anything so we'll get to that hey you guys asked for it so i'm going to like step one here if you've never seen this before this is all the stuff i have to do down here these are called string overdubs so this was all of the like additional takes in pink it's all grouped together like that and then we had strings overdub two, so these are like triple passes on top of each other, just little special moments. Um, they actually recorded, I didn't request this, but it actually is going to help us a little bit. They went ahead and recorded all the brass to the live strings, uh, which I think in retrospect was a good idea because, you know, it's like live players playing to the other live players from earlier in the day. 
and it just makes it easier. So yellow today is going to be the normal brass, the main brass, and then the overdub brass down there. So you see how it's already super duper organized, color coded. Pro Tools automatically color codes every new group, which is phenomenal. And from here, uh, I, the first thing I have to do is I have to get rid of all of their routing because obviously I'm not in their studio. So really all I have to do here is just start deleting stuff. So all of these extra stuff, I'm just gonna delete. I don't need any of that stuff in those extra tracks. I'll also go down, get rid of any of their, like their, they have a reverb channel. They have all of their mics and talking and all that stuff. So just bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. I also make sure that I have over here my little click down menu and make sure inserts and sends are seen. That way I can start adding stuff. Um, the first thing I want to do is just start getting rid of every insert and send because it's, again, it's not my system. So I'm going to hold shift alt my keyboard, go to the top and just start globally erasing all sends, all inputs. And because of that key command, now it has done it for every track in bulk. The other thing I need to do is start creating some aux tracks. So if I create a new stereo aux, just like this. And I see that you guys have questions. I'll get to those in just a little bit. Um, I'm really, really focused on just getting junk done here today. Uh, I will say hi. I want to say hi to Andrew, Micah, Sector 7, Sam. Oh, just hanging out, Alan. I saw Tommy Haru for a second. Hope you're still here. Hi, what's up? And yeah, Tommy finally got to come to a, a live stream. Yeah, that's that's cool. I'm glad you're here, man. Um, a lot of you, most of you, are actually already in the Video Game Music Alliance. So, so we'll, maybe during the live chat, can you guys tell some of the people who are not yet in the VGM Alliance why they should come in? Um, I talk with Matt all the time that, yes, I'm the one who created and founded Video Game Music Alliance, but I'm not the one who runs it. Like, that's not my that's not my job. That's not my deal. Like, we're all there to grow together. This is like a community-centered thing. So while I have a strong hand in it, of course, it has to keep running. Got to keep the lights on. Um, it's not about me. It's about you guys just like talking to each other and connecting and sharing war, war stories and all that stuff. So I like when you guys share with each other what works, what, what doesn't work and all that jazz. Anyway, um, so yeah, as I was saying, I need to create some aux tracks. The purpose of this, it helps us to group everything together that way when we actually start mixing, when I do one little uh, mixing knob, or fader, it, it's going to adjust everything, not just like one microphone for the first violin section, right? That's stupid. We need to like do everything together. So here we go. This is gonna be called strings aux. I'll just go ahead and make a bunch of these actually. Let's just make like five. Uh, a stereo aux. Uh, let's just start labeling them. So this will be strings OD one aux. Strings OD two. Aux, brass aux, brass OD aux. Uh, we're gonna need some more for choir, so let's call it choir aux. Um, let's do an overdub choir. And that should be enough for now. Actually, I'll go ahead and do two, because one of these needs to be choir OD aux, and the last one we'll call it stems because at the end of the day, I have to import my MIDI stems to kind of supplement all that good stuff. <laughs> Sam says, why do I need to join the Video Game Alliance? I mean, you don't have to, unless you want to be awesome. Hey, I don't have to convince anybody of anything. It's where video game music composers hang out and grow together to become prof professionals. It's not really for hobbyists. It's not like we talk about making money. We talk about selling our music and social media presence and marketing and growing an audience and all the things and mixing and mastering and composing and all the things that, that help, you know, support your family through video game music. That's kind of the whole spiel. 
Anywho, um, so I feel good about that so far. I like to make all of my aux tracks green, personal preference, so I can visually kind of see what's happening. And then I feel good about that so far. Now let's go through and I guess I should, I should import the, the choir. Let me import the choir. So since the choir is in a different session, I have to go to file, import session, session data. And I have to go through here and find the choir session because it's a different Pro Tools session. They were not all recorded together. In retrospect, I probably should have just asked them to record all of them together. This is the same company, but whatever. Oversight. Uh, so we find the session for just this one called Echo of Seasons. Double click the Pro Tools session and then it brings up this fancy, fancy menu, which is overly complicated. All I really have to do is go down here and click everything. Wait, what in the world? Oh, it has all my stems and everything. Okay. Um, not a fan of that. Let me deselect. Oy, sorry about that. So what happens when we're live? You make mistakes. All right, import session data. Let me try this again. So if I click on the Pro Tools, all I really need from here, since there's so much junk in that session, really all I need are the choir tracks themselves, which should be here. I'm just gonna click and drag until we're good. Looks like they, we have overdubs. We have, like I'm looking like I got 50 different tracks. So I need to make sure I select the right ones. Okay, I'm gonna import all of these things into my session. This, this is the same as, you know, working in Cubase, Logic, what have you. Uh, it's gonna take a minute because it's a lot of WAV files from a gajillion takes over four hours. So just give that a minute as part of this process as well as like, just letting Pro Tools import stuff. I could probably take an hour importing stuff, but hopefully this will give us a little bit of time to answer some questions. Uh, Alan says, sign up. The community is super helpful and it really helps to learn with a group. That's not how Alan sounds at all, but today it is. Sam says, I admit, I wait. The opening of Video Game Music Alliance this autumn, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, yes, so quarter four. So in a couple months, we will have another launch there are more active audio tracks than the allowed maximum. One of these days, I'll have to upgrade to like the super duper fancy version of Pro Tools. But until then, that's fine. I'm not even going to use all those tracks. Okay, here's what I need to do. Friends. Enemies. Oh no, it's having trouble locating. I think it should be fine. Yeah, it's just, it's populating all the regions. It just takes a little bit. Okay, here's what I need to do. I gotta figure out where all of my, these are all of my uh, choir guys. I'm gonna just do, give the same treatment that we did earlier. Let's not get confused. Okay. So you have to forgive me. This is just part of the process is like figuring out the organization before you actually do the fun musical stuff. So what I'm doing is I'm putting all my stems together here. That way everything, not my stems, my aux tracks all in order. That way we can actually do all the mixing with the auxes instead of the individual tracks. It just makes it so much easier to mix like seven things instead of, I don't know, a hundred. So let's get these in order and color coded. First thing is let's select all of the choir tracks and let's get rid of all of the gibberish all the sins from the studio and stuff sometimes i do all this stuff before a stream but you know you guys asked you wanted to see what what you do when you open a session it's not like it doesn't come perfect and beautiful that's part of my job is to make it perfect and beautiful um so now you can kind of see the light blue that's all the normal choir dark blue is the overdub choir so far so good i think i'm going to keep choir at the top of my orchestral order, and then I will do strings, brass, stems. I think that's the most logical, that's actually the actual score order. Actually, I think brass in, this, in an orchestral score 
Am I getting that right? I don't even know where choir is. Huh. I don't even know. Uh, maybe I should do like that. Choir, brass, strings. I think that's more normal. So strings. I'm going to move all of these at the same time. Holy moly, there's so many tracks, guys. This is a little overwhelming. Um, another way that you can do this in Pro Tools is over here in the tracks screen, you can drag selections of tracks. So I'm going to put them all below. Just like that. Okie dokie. And we get rid of all of their aux tracks that they made in the studio just to kind of save space because I'm going to need every possible track. Because already this is kind of bananas. Um, <laughs> this might be the day that I upgrade Pro Tools. I don't want to. But the version of Pro Tools I have only lets you have 100 tracks. It's kind of bonkers. No other program has that limitation. They want to they wanna squeeze you dry. So I might have to do some kind of like bouncing to consolidate some of the stuff. But look at that. That's already 100 tracks. I haven't even put in my stems yet. Isn't that crazy? So the gray ones, uh, Pro Tools, once you hit 100 tracks, it just starts graying out stuff, which is just crazy. Um, I love Pro Tools. I still recommend it to people, but it is, it's like one of the most expensive pieces of software. They just charge you at the wazoo for it. And I get why, because it's so good, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So powerful. And I, I got it way before the subscription model stuff started. So this is like, I think Pro Tools 11. I think it's, now it's just like unlimited or something. It has some name, but it's not numbered anymore, I think. I could be wrong. I haven't checked up on it in a while. Anywho, um, the first things we got to do here is get our routing. So now that we have all of the tracks that we're going to use, it's kind of bananas because now I don't even have enough space. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, let me do this. I was not anticipating that at all. I'm going to delete all the groups that they are that they made. I want to make my own just so I don't get confused. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm deleting all of the, the stuff that they set up at the studio so that I can do it myself manually. Um, so from here, what I'd like to do is like, we're gonna have to just create um, maybe 50 stereo tracks here at the bottom. Jeez. It's already yelling at me, isn't that nuts? Here we go. Um, and the purpose of that is now when I go to import, I need to go find all of my soloist. It's just part of the process is getting everything in the session and then you can start mixing. Um, so here are my five soloists for these collection of tracks. We have Kyle Paxton playing Hammer Dulcimer, Johannes Kevorkian Hellman playing Hurdy Gurdy, Kristen Nygus playing Native American Flute, Andrew Dunn playing solo cello, and Mateus Garcia Souza playing a solo violin. Highly recommend all five of these musicians, by the way. Um, they're all world class at what they do, which is fantastic. Um, I mean, it's, they're just so, so good. Here we go. So here's what I have to do. Um, I actually, uh, each of these musicians gave me multiple mic positions and I went through in a separate Audacity session or a Pro Tool session. I went ahead and combined the mics in a way that I like and then export them as a single WAV file in my preferred format, which is 48K, 24-bit. The purpose of that is so that I can literally just go here and put them all in the session at the same time. So the way to do that, you just double click it and it gets added to... Uh, you have to choose add files or copy files. I'm going to do, uh, let's do copy. Come on, please. Are we bugging out already? I haven't even started. What in the world? Let me try again. Sorry. Okay. One more time. There we go. If you double click it, it gets added to this import menu. And now I can just go through and find all of the Echo of Seasons musicians that I've already pre-mixed. That way the soloists, oh yeah, we don't have cello on this track. 
We have violin. So it's really only three musicians for this right here. Wait, what? Andrew Goodwin? Hold up. You said Andrew Dunn's your teacher? What in the world? You need to expand on that. What does he teach you? Uh, cello? He's, he's world-class cellist. He's so good. We've been friends for a while through video game music stuff. Um, it's kind of funny how you like come around to meeting people. But that's insane. I, I need to know more. I had no idea. He taught. I guess that's another side. Uh, he also plays... I'm in, I'm in Atlanta. He actually plays at the Atlanta Symphony, Symphony sometimes too. And I know he's based in... I want to say Nashville. Near there. Uh, okay, anyway. I want to put everything into my clip list. Which is over here. So now... Should be look how many look guys look how many audio files there are. That's probably two thousand audio files that have already been imported into my session. Like that's how insane this stuff is. But thankfully, everything I just imported is already selected. So now I just need to go do, 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 over here. Let's hit shuffle and drag them in the best we can. And it might be a situation where. One of them's mono. Ugh, I think I'm running into that problem right now. So let's grab Mr. Hurdy Gurdy. Who else did we do? We did Hammer Dulcimer. So Hammer Dulcimer alphabetically. It's way up here. Hammer Dulcimer. And then we did Solo Violin, which is going to be way down here. I'll try to stick with my naming conventions. That way I never get lost. So the reason I couldn't just drag them all in is because solo violin over here is a mono audio track. And in Pro Tools, it yells at you if you do this wrong. Oh, it's still yelling at me. Stop yelling at me. But for real, this might be the day I have to upgrade just for my sanity. <laughs> anyway, solo violin. This is hammer dulcimer. And this is... I'll call it HG Melody, Hurdy Gurdy Melody. Here we go, solo violin. There we go. And there's the stuff I know all of you can do right there. So I like to label all of my, I like to color code, I should say, all of my solo tracks. Let's just do an orangey color. That way they kind of stand out. And it's kind of insane, but yeah, I can't even, I might not be able to mix today. This is kind of nuts. I'm, I will still do what I can. That's just been kind of bonkers. Yeah. Okay. Andrew, that's super cool, man. That's super cool. I had no idea. Are you learning cello? What in the world? I knew you, you were a guitarist and obviously a composer. That's pretty wild that you know, Andrew. All right. So down here. I want to, if Pro Tools will cooperate, I need to import. This is my last import of the day. I need to import. <laughs> I've been importing for like 30 minutes, guys. This is nuts. I need to import um, all of my stems. So I have to go to the actual original track. This one's called Echo of Seasons. Whoosh. Got my stems. A good thing about the stems, I, I will go ahead and include them all. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to copy files. That way they're unique to this session. They're not reliant upon that folder changing or whatever. Same thing, we're going to put them into the clip folder, but look how, how beefy this session is becoming. It's madness, man. Um, the original sessions themselves, they got up to like nine gigabytes. Pretty crazy. Just so big. So, so big. Especially with so many WAV files. But yeah. So let's give it a second to import. I'm going to do my best to actually mix. Um, I've never hit this limitation before. This is my first time doing live choir, live strings, live brass, live soloists, and stems all in one session. So... I'm like at 200 uh, simultaneous tracks, not to mention all the takes, which is thousands of WAV files. 
I haven't even done anything yet. It's just like, ah, crazy. So, so crazy. Okay, so Andrew, I have to clarify that the Native American flute is not for this particular track. Neither is the solo cello. So sorry to disappoint. That'll be for a later track. Um, or is it? This is Echo of Seasons. So this one does have Native American flute. So I take it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no cello on this one, but there is flute. So I actually have to import that as soon as this loads. This is a good day for coffee. Every day is a good coffee day, but just, I just feel like we're hanging out, sipping on the coffees. <laughs> That's crazy, Andrew, that you're learning cello from him. I just, what are the odds? That is so bananas to me. Um, Elegy, what's up? Elegy says, Pro Tools macro is being slightly different than Logic ones. Makes me dread working in Pro Tools. Yes, I totally understand that. Um, Pro Tools is very strange that they don't let you edit the key commands. So what I've done as a result, knowing that I have to use Pro Tools in my line of work, I've literally adopted every shortcut in Pro Tools to then copy out. I duplicate that in every other DAW so that I'm always doing the same key commands. So that's kind of my workaround. Not sure it's a great workaround, but you know. Okay, I'm kind of scared. I'm going to try the clip list. Let's see what happens. Oh, Lordy. Uh, let's do, I haven't seen this menu before. Um, oh gosh, it's going to ask me for every flipping file. Oh my gosh. I love me some pro tools, but dang, it, it is like the king of error messages. If you do anything, <laughs> Like, you have to appease the Pro Tools gods. It's a very particular order. You have to do everything. And, I mean, Pro Tools is, like, the worst software known to man, which I, I understand why people hate it so much. But it is for those same reasons that it, it makes it so good because it plays by its own set of rules, granted. But once you kind of learn the rules, it can do so just incredibly powerful audio editing that, that I've never seen even come any other software come close all right looks like we have many many tracks here so i'm a little scared that pro tools is going to yell at me again um i don't know if we're going to be able to do this right now i might have to do some like upgrade for a month while i do all this stuff and then downgrade or something that's insane to me that yeah it, there are not even enough tracks here um but the good news is most of the tracks, most of my stems are actually stuff that's already recorded. So if you can bear with me for a second, my workaround today, my, my free workaround today. First of all, let's get the Native American flute in here. Oh man, this is bananas. Um, I'm just going to throw in the things that I know need to be here. Um, and it just is really frustrating. Um, looks like it turned them into mono. What the heck? All right, so if you ever have like a stupid error in Pro Tools that has to deal with the clip list, which is what I'm experiencing right now, and it's this is going to drive me insane. I'm going to go to clear, remove. And I know this is a pain in the butt. But it got rid of all of them from this session. Now it's not going to like compete. And this is just what I have to do, deal with. So I'll even probably go to my audio files and yep. So I just made sure that all the stems are gone. Let's try one more time. Um, you got to see all the other things I'm working on here. So Native American flute, echo of seasons. Let's add it in. To clip list. And my apologies to anyone who joined, hoping that we could jump straight into the music, but that is just not the case. You have to have to play around with the session for a little bit before you can actually hear the music. It's just part of the game. All right, there we go. So I forgot Mr. Native American Flute earlier. It's super good, by the way. Uh, Kristen is probably the, I mean, 
to me, to me, in my opinion, probably one of the the best woodwind players on the planet. She is featured on just about every video game and film ever. Um, she's prolific and, and has every woodwind in her little studio. Just has them all. If you, if you name it, you think of it. You just think of the most obscure. Uh, like the other day, like last year, she recorded a bass pan flute for me. I'm like, do you have this? Why, yes, yes, I do. Fantastic. Just a fantastic human all around. Um, so anyway, so we have those four. So the challenge now is getting these final stems in, but I'm going to be smart this time around. You ready for me to be smart? I'm ready to be smart. This time I'm going to go to the stems. Hope you're following with me here because I'm, I know I'm rambling. I'm going to go to just the things I know I need. So I don't need choir. I don't need half this junk because I have it live. So I'm just going to intentionally avoid everything I know I already have to hopefully limit my track count just enough to make it. I think we're going to make it, guys. I hope we're going to make it. I think it's less than 20 tracks. Cool. I think we did it. I think we did it. <laughs> okay. Clip list. Yay, look at there. I'm exactly, I'm like at 90 something tracks. So we haven't gone over the 100 limit. Look, I have a few to spare just in case. <laughs> That's terrifying. Ah, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Holy macaroni. I have 92 tracks in my session right now that I have to have, that I, I can't live without. Wow. So what I'm going to do is go up here and I want to make sure um, I'm gonna make a group again pardon all this setup stuff I know it's it's annoying but I hope please let me know is this helpful for any of you for me to walk through step by step <clears throat> the organization process it's boring but it, I, it, I assume it's helpful for somebody or else I would happily not do this in front of you because <laughs> I know it's so boring um, <clears throat> okay group called stems just like that, and it colors them, yay. I'm gonna change the color. I'm big on colors. I think it helps separate ideas. So I like to make these something really bland and boring so that I don't end up using them very much. There we go. So we have our four soloists, and then down here we have all of our horns and stuff. All right, I think we are ready. You guys ready? Has anyone fallen asleep yet? I hope not. Right here at the top, I have the master track. All that I have on here is my Fox and Go recorder. Anyone who's ever watched my streams before, you know, oopsies, you know that you have to have this plugin open in order to stream audio. And I'm using Meta Plugin, which is another plugin to help house said plugin, which is nice. So let me get my windows situated. I think we'll be ready. So really, really the last thing to do here. <laughs> yes, Sam. <laughs> it really is. I've taken like 40 minutes to import my stupid tracks, but it is important. It totally is important. I mean, you got to do this stuff. And I know that no one ever talks about this stuff, which is why I'm so adamant about doing it. But now the goal is to get my routing. So if you don't know anything about routing, Essentially, it's connecting my inputs to my outputs. It's, it's just making sure that every sound will be heard once I hit play. So the way to do that, um, basically every single one of these right here is going to have an input. It's quite lovely, really. So we go over here. There's a my favorite shortcut on keyboard, computer keyboard, is Alt Shift. When you hold Alt and Shift inside Pro Tools, it will do one. It'll do a global command, a bulk action to everything that's selected. So I'm currently selecting all of my inputs, outputs. And so if I were to hold Alt and Shift, it will change all of them to the same thing. But another key command is if I hold down Control, Alt, Shift while I do this, and I select a bus, so let's just say the input is bus one, two, then all of a sudden it'll cascade them all, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, consecutive. 
19, all the way down. And likewise, I can do the same thing on the output side. So right now my output is one, two, which is my master. So now all of my auxes have their own unique bus. And so now all I have to do is go through each of the sections. So this is the normal choir. And I'm gonna only do Alt plus Shift to make sure all of them have the correct bus. It's quite easy once, you, once you've once you done it. So that's just bus one, two, and now I'm just gonna go in order. And this is why I made sure to do all of this in one type of order and I got all the colors set. So now that's all I'm doing is I'm just going one at a time. So now overdub brass is the fourth one right there. And then we have strings which is now 9, 10. Now we're gonna do 11, 12 for string overdub one. And then string overdub two, which in retrospect, let me turn these up. Oh man, we kind of have to have them, that sucks. I'm looking for a way to eliminate some tracks, but it looks like we have to have them anyway. Over here, uh, this has to be the next number, which is 12, 13. Wait, no, not uh, 13, 14. And we're done with those. Um, the Each of these is fine. They can kind of have their own mix going to one, two, stereo output, and then all of these are just my stems. So the great question of the day is, if I turn Oh, I forgot one more thing. Sorry. Before I hit play, I want now that I've done all my routing, now I need to make sure that everything's grouped, which is an extra step, but it's totally worth it. So I'm going to select my first group, which is choir aux. We're gonna create a group called choir aux. Actually, I'll just call it choir. And now they're all connected. If I can click on one of them, it does something like all of my actions will be done to all of those tracks. And yeah, Matt just said it so perfectly. Definitely not glamorous, but getting organization right is such an important part of the process. Absolutely. So let's keep making groups. You can hit control G if you wish. So this is choir OD. This actually goes by pretty fast. Watch. If you stop talking, I know I'm talking a lot. This is uh, brass, brass OD. Next to strings. Next up, strings OD1. And then strings OD2. And the last group, which I've already done, is called stems, which are all of the yellow tracks, which if I want to, I can label, but I don't really have to because the names are in the track. Totally fine. Hey, what's up, Eric? So glad you're here. You just joined at the best moment of the whole stinking day. I just spent 45 awful minutes. Sorry for everyone. <laughs> spent 45 minutes talking through the import. That's how long it took to import all my tracks because it's just so, it's so specific in the routing. But now we're done. Woohoo. <laughs> all right, guys, you can go home now. Bye. Just kidding. This is the best part because you get to finally hear something. Okay, this is me not touching a single knob, a single fader. This is literally everything out of the box. It's probably going to blow up, but let's just see if any sound comes out. It should. Gulp. Ooh. Ooh, I like it. Ah, I see that. Pro Tools does not want me. It's not going to play any of these tracks, is it? That's a bummer, bummer, bummer. I have a question for Pro Tools. What happens if I disable stuff? Yep, it starts to enable others. That's really annoying. Um, so what's probably going to happen is I might, I might find some creative way. So just hang on, guys, hang on. Um, even if I had all those active, I wouldn't care 
because part of mixing is making sure each section works on its own and then combining the sections. So the first thing I want to do anyway, now that I know that audio works, let's just kind of poke through for a second and see, make sure brass and choir work too. Cool. So if you're going to do solo, you have to solo the whole section. So now look, when I hit the up and down, if I increase the volume of one instrument in that group, the whole group goes up and down, which is so nice. It's also a cool function here. If you hit the AZ button, I can just hit F on my keyboard. And in your preferences, you, in your edit preferences, you can actually set the, the perfect type of fade and crossfade that you want every time you hit the letter F. And now every single time I click on my group of audio files, I just hit F and it crossfades or fades in, fades out exactly how I've predefined it. So it's a really fast way to start messing with all of your audio clips. Man, that, this is with no reverb or anything. It already sounds so good. It's all recorded in the same spot. Let's get overdubs in there too. Dude, that tuba and bass trombone are so cool. Another function I like in Pro Tools is if you hold Alt and Shift, you can scroll your mouse wheel up and down and it, and it doesn't change the actual volume, it just changes the waveform, how large it is, and that's super helpful if something's quiet. Or if you just want to see exactly where the waveform starts, like here, this helps me when I zoom in and out to decide where to start the crossfade or the fade in and out. Really nice. Another function I haven't even utilized yet in Pro Tools is if I right click, I can go to matching alternatives and look at all the takes I can choose from if my heart so desires. Um, Pro Tools, because the way they recorded it, every new take, they do a take on top of the exact same spot. So if I wanted to use a previous take, I could. Um, you can do this by expanding alternates to new tracks, to new playlists, it's amazing. I rarely go into this menu because usually the final take of something is the best or the engineers will already choose the best live in the session. So this is why having a good engineer is amazing and saves you so many hours. Um, but if I, if something's like, there's a wrong note and I need a previous take, I can go in and, and find it individually. So it's so nice to finally hear everything, even just the brass parts all in one take, you know? So here's a moment where when you start doing some crossfades, so just hit F and it, ooh, I don't like that. Oh, uh, maybe I do. Yeah, that is my preferred crossfade. It's just a perfect X. Also, I don't know if other programs can do this, but at least in Pro Tools, live while you're playing, while you're playing, you can actually add and you can edit whatever you want while it's playing, which is so nice. I don't think Cubase allows you to do that. That makes audio editing so much faster when I can change my crossfades while it's playing. Sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of that hall verb naturally. Nice. So I'm right at the moment just kind of focusing on brass because it sounds so nice. 
a bit of a false start, so fade in will help here. Sorry, Alan, that you got to watch the worst part of this stream, but I hope you'll come back and watch the fun stuff now that we're doing music. Have a great flight. Another cool about thing about recording multiple mics like this, if there's a certain moment that I want to just bump up the trombones or just the tuba or whatever, I can, I can actually balance by going to individual tracks and bumping up or down, and it really does help. Super cool. Man, isn't live brass fun? Lovely. Such a cool track. Here we go. I got to start making some progress. Is that a wrong note? It's not a wrong note. It's the overdub horns. They're doubling the strings. So I might have to remove that or just, we'll see. Another part of lining up your tracks is making sure your fade outs roughly happen at the same time, which is another really cool way of doing groups is I can make the whole group line up to the exact same fade out point, which is so nice for just having control. And of course, once I add some reverb, everything will sound better, but you got to edit micro and then you can go macro. Like that, you want to get rid of those giant breaths. That's such an epic solo choir moment. Ooh, look, the wall of sound made it into this session. Do you guys remember that? Ooh. <laughs> That's so cool and totally not part of this track. Nice. All right, so. Brass feels really good. It feels like everything's at a good level. I do want to check the overdub levels. <clears throat> oh yeah, it's super quiet. Let's turn them up a bunch. Again, over here. Half the fun is just getting to listen through stuff. Just getting to listen through stuff. Like this. Man, this track's been stuck on my head for literally months. Sakimoto's melodies are such earworms. Let's uh, put them together. All right, choir is going to be the most complicated, so let's add strings next. And this is where the real fun begins, is getting all of these lovely textures in. Yay! So now all I have to do 
to listen to it is hit the strings aux solo. That's it. Now, because everything's routed, everything's going to sound amazing. And I can start doing some little editing bits. Mixing does not take that long. It's just, I promise, you will save dozens of hours if you just take the first 45 minutes, hour, to set up the right routing and the right editing structure. Everything just kind of falls in place. It's so nice. Here we go. For sake of time, I'm gonna skip ahead. Sounds so good. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> I don't like the crossfades that they used. Use my own. I like very, very small crossfades unless we have to have a big one. <laughs> You have to edit the track itself with like a little cross, like a fade out, an actual fade out. Gotta tame it down. Sounds like uh, Dark Souls, the Firelink Shrine, doesn't it? starting to get a little bit more granular I'm, I'm going to add i'm glad i had more room because now i need to add a reverb aux the way that this works we're just not going to have any mm, let's make yeah we're going to create an input we're going to call it doesn't really matter let's make it let's actually not do any input but it's going to have a, a an output to one two which is my stereo but the goal here is to slap on 100% of my favorite reverb, which is going to be Aether, my favorite. I go to Hall 2, and I do 100%. But now, 
every single section, I'm going to use a send. So I'm going to do a bus send, I'm sorry, a track send to reverb. And now I can choose the actual percentage that we want. They're in decibels, so like negative, uh, I think on average, I don't want a lot. So maybe brass, for example, might only need 30, like negative 30. And just as a starting point, I'm going to copy that out to each of the tracks. And now everything's going to have that amount of reverb. What's up, Chew? And now there, you're going to notice a bit of a, a difference in the quality. It's going to sound a little bit more lively. A little bit goes a long way. giving each of the sections slightly different amounts of reverb. I want choir to have the most, brass to have a little bit less, strings to have the least amount because they're the closest. So if it's further away, it needs a little bit more reverb to feel like it's in real life, like it's further away. Anyway, uh, we're doing strings, which are way down here. Here. So much nicer to listen to. <laughs> it has a little bit of room, you know. Here we go. Having fun? So let's get rid of that. Lovely. Okay, the fact that I can hear like dead silence afterwards, I don't love. So that means my strings need a little bit more love on the reverb department. So let's give them, well, let's just play with it until it feels right. And then we'll base everything else off of that, this ending. It's not enough. Let's just keep playing. Too much. Let's try 22. There's no magic number. You just got to play with it till it feels right. Hmm. Still use a little bit more. It's a little bit too dry on that release. There we go. Okay, 20 is now the number. Oh boy. Um, so if 20 is the number, then I need to fix these others. It's part of the experimentation process, which means brass needs to be 18. And then choir is gonna need to be like 16. Something a little bit lower, or at least equal to. There we go. Okay. Now, let's look at the string overdubs. There's two sets of them. Hopefully we can get rid of some of them. I don't know. I hope we can. Let's see what these sound like when we add them in. Oops, let's turn on the aux, don't we? Whoopsies. Let's go ahead and turn them all on. Ah oh, yes, the pizzicato.
turn up that one little section. Too quiet. This, I love working with Sakimoto. I love working with him. Um, it has been so cool because he has Final Fantasy just embedded in his style. And so much of what has made Final Fantasy what it is. And obviously his time with Umatsu is, is heavily been inspired as well. So like this is so Final Fantasy 1. And that whole tukka, 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 tukka is very Final Fantasy 8. Even though he didn't write those, he has spent time, so much time under the tutelage of Uematsu that it's like, it just bleeds out. And this, like, this four bar phrase could come straight from Final Fantasy 1. Isn't that great? All right, let's move on to... This is such a bummer. I can't hear anything. Um, it's like Pro Tools upgrade is coming. Like, now. <laughs> Crazy, man. Uh, I need to make sure, is this even a real note? Like, what's happening here? So my only workaround right now is literally to disable stuff. And since I don't have choir enabled yet, I can make inactive temporarily. That way it opens up some fake Pro Tools magic over here. Now I still want to mute all of the stems, but at least I can start playing around with, I can first of all hear <laughs> all of my overdubs. That's important. Thank you. 
All right, let's start adding in the soloists before I get to any stems. So the soloists are Hurdy Gurdy, which reminds me, I need to get Hurdy Gurdy drone up here because he's technically a soloist. It's just a MIDI soloist. Funny enough, recorded by the same guy though, because um, I had that my last recording session with Johannes. I had him do a sampling session. That way I could forevermore have my own drones. Not for sale, by the way, just kind of my own library. Um, that way he doesn't have to go through and record drones every time I want to record him. He can just record the melodies, which is such a time saver and a money saver. So now if I just solo, let's take a minute to just solo him. Oh my heavens, so many tracks. This is so cool much <laughs> this is so crazy 92 tracks baby all right so if i just get hurdy let's get some hurdy by the way he is by a long shot the best hurdy gurdy player i've ever heard i actually found him on youtube because i loved him so much i'm like please record for us and he's been doing it ever since he actually vibrates like a violin player. He uses vibrato on a hurdy-gurdy. He instantly became my best friend that way. Lovely. I haven't heard these yet. The soloist, like I've just downloaded them. All right, let's start getting. His stuff is a little bit off. So let's use the grid mode. Let's figure it out. Can't wait. It's pretty time consuming, but it's mostly just getting stuff to land where it needs to land. Oh, there we go. Sorry, one of my tracks ate the other track. You can't even see what I'm doing. What, what in the world? Sorry. Hope you're having fun in some twisted way. This is fun for you. <laughs> I just hope it's helpful and this is, you know, different way of doing it. Hey, Travis is here. Everybody say hey to Travis. He is the creator of Dark Dice. <laughs> Having the hardest time moving this dadgum piece of data. Blech. This should not be so difficult. It really isn't difficult. I'm just making it difficult. Here we go. Let's use our brains. And let's slide it over where the cello comes in because it's the same dang part. 
Somehow it just got off and now I have to use the slip to get it to cooperate. <laughs> Got it. Can't wait to get the choir in here. <laughs> Greatest 12 notes or whatever that is ever written. place. So lovely. Herdy drone is going to need to be tamed down a little bit. I do like it. Something we learned in the last... 20 plus tracks. Actually, we've done 30 tracks. This is track number 30. Kind of crazy. Live tracks like this. Um, so we learned, a funny little trick we learned was the hurdy-gurdy drone seems to work best when it's panned left, like 40%, because it matches really well. It tends to double the, the celli and the basses, which are on the right side of the, the pan spectrum, so it's really nice to double them. <laughs> really well.
ready for Hammer Dulcimer? I am. Let's do it. Hammer Dulcimer. All right. This is by Kyle Paxton. He, oh my gosh, guys. He's so pro. He sent me 12, I repeat, 12 microphone positions. So just this morning, I took all 12 and I mixed them <laughs> just so it would be one dang track because there's no way I'm going to have 12 Dulcimer tracks on here. But that's how pro he is. He's, again, he's absolutely world class. The best Hammer Dulcimer player I've ever met in my life. He's in New Zealand. But he's actually from my hometown in Atlanta. Woohoo! Unbelievably good. If you ever need a Dolphin player, unbelievable. So let's put him where he belongs. 12 freaking mic positions. What do I even do with that? <laughs> I used them all too. It's so rich and full. It's, it's just crazy. 12 is insane. It's like, who can play this? Have you guys ever seen a dulcimer? Like, I have one. It's hard. The stuff he can do is, like, mind-boggling. Check this out. It's just, like, one little phrase. He probably just sight-read once. Oh, good. You got off a little bit. Holy crap. <laughs> Love it. We put this. Looks like this is where we got off a little bit. So we're here to slang 16th notes and all these different octaves. Get what's happening, it's all syncopated, but it just it feels the tiniest bit off. So cool. It's like note perfectly too. Ah, nice, Tommy.
Oh, lovely. Ooh. Oh, it's so menacing. Love that. It's one of those times. Dulcimer is one of those super dynamic instruments that it's really hard to tell when it, when it comes in. So it's nice to be able to blow up the waveforms like this. Because you never would have seen it right there unless you blow it up. See? Dulcimer always reminds me of Zelda. Koji Kondo used a lot of Dulcimer and Koto. Travis, if you're still here, I hope you're hearing this because this is just so cool, isn't it? Other thing I like about working with world-class musicians is they tend, I always, I don't even have to ask this because they've worked with me before, but typically if it's the first time working with a musician, I ask, please play everything exactly as written on the sheet music and then please do a second take where you do whatever the heck you want. And this is one of those moments where he clearly, I didn't have to ask him. He actually asked me, he's like, hey, do you want me to just do whatever I want throughout the tracks? So I'm like, yes, please. Because I trust his judgment. He does all these cool like extra tremolos and, and rolls and things that I would never write. But that just adds another level of quality and interest to the music. Like I didn't write this cool crescendo leading into it, but he just did it naturally, which is so cool. And of course I can cut it off if I want, but how cool is that? So cool. It's got to find the starting point because <laughs> it's a giant blob. Where does it start? Oh, it's way back here. Where the heck? I need to, I need to hear the choir because I don't even know where this goes. Oh, it's way back here. Sorry. Yum, ba, dum, bum, bum. I guess it happens on the second time. Crescendo. It has to be that.
Found it. like this where it gets a little bit sluggish I'll just take the second half and slide it forward and then do a crossfade that way I don't have to like deal with quantizing and stuff <laughs> There it is. Found it. Okay. Next little section. <laughs> How cool is that? This is definitely two takes. This is... Six microphones on take one, six microphones on take two. You can hear how they overlap, but it's, co it's a cool combo. Haven't done it before. Just gets a little bit loud, so maybe right here I might just cut off. This is a moment where I want everyone to start together, so we're just going to do a little fade. this at the end oh interesting see that that hurdy-gurdy drone sounds so good in the left ear when the strings are in the right Like that a lot. All right, guys, ready for some more fun? Uh, let's do solo violin. Mateus Garcia Souza, one of the best violinists I've ever heard in my life. I mean, these are all the best. These are such good musicians. Oh, I've used Mateus on everything Dark Dice since day one. Um, he's my favorite violinist in the world. Um, also has credits up the wazoo. <laughs> Any solo violin desperately needs some reverb, so let's do this. His sound is so technically proficient, but still very warm and emotional. To me, he sounds like Joshua Bell, if I can say that. So pretty and warm. Typically, violin players are very, very bright. I just like how warm his stuff is. And his violin... Oh, where is it from? He has some cool story about where the violin's from. I gotta remember it. I think it's from like John Williams, f like famous violinist for everything, like Schindler's List. It's like the violin used in all of that. That's why I love it so much because it's John Williams, who's my favorite film composer of all time.
yeah, I mean, everything Matthias touches is gold. <laughs> Lovely. Adds so much emotional depth to this line. So simple, but mm. and now perhaps the main event for this track because it's the only track that has Native American flute. The moment you've all been waiting for, Kristen Nigus, everybody. The myth, the legend. Um, Kristen is actually David Wise's favorite woodwind player as well and fun fact when i was originally talking with david way back when we did our collaboration together on our track for north realm um when i mentioned the name Kristen, i guess he's like i'm in i'm in if she's in <laughs> um they used to play they probably still play together um because he plays saxophone as you might know um and they play it all like magfest and gdc and stuff E3, they played all the shows, they play G, uh, VGM covers, and obviously he plays a lot of his own stuff, like Donkey Kong Country stuff, um, and she's usually right there with him, they, they're they like woodwind buddies, it's really fun. So pretty. Everything has to have that right mixing spot, though. Let's figure out where it goes. <laughs> Lovely.
ready, guys. The moment I've been waiting for. Perhaps you haven't been. Oh boy, I don't know how many choir things I can even make active. Ugh. Bashwa. Perhaps. That's so annoying. <laughs> oh boy. Um. Wait, what can I afford to disengage? Not much. Wire. Maybe I can disengage. I don't want to disengage anybody. But perhaps the one thing I can live without right now is the second overdub. I might just combine overdub one and two. Once I'm happy with the levels, just to call it a day and actually have access to all my tracks, that'd be stellar, huh? Here we go. So nice.
song section. Hold on. <laughs> Thought I was boosting the choir. <laughs> So freaking pretty. Wow. Those choir moments are just gold. Goosebumps over here. All right, time to do a little bit of a, a trick. I'm going to select all of the choir. <clears throat> We're going to do what's called polyphonic audio quantizing, time stretching. And on a very light scale, I'm going to select all choir like this. All choir tracks. This is highly effective. Since this whole track is basically eighth notes, this will help a lot. I might undo it for those like organic moments. Um, but for now, I'm going to... Actually, let's go ahead and take it off. Let's actually... That's smart. I think like... There's a couple of really exposed, gorgeous moments. I doesn't need it at all. I'm just gonna handpick any section that needs timing help. It'll be more organic this way. And then just quantize it as eighth notes and that should help quite a bit. All I have to do is hit eighth notes. Da, 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 da. Might just be quarter notes actually. <laughs> da, da, da. Okay, that's eighth notes. Da, 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 da. Yep. Like this, eighth notes, hit apply, and it just does it. as well you can always change some of these but it helps so much and bump the volume of the first set considerably so we can actually hear it
quantize just this section of the strings as well can help so much because they're all eighth notes. Ticka, 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 ticka. It'll help match with the choir. So you don't want to quantize everything, especially with audio. It's recorded live for a reason. You don't want it to be too computerized, whatever. Um, it's really nice to have the option just for this one little section. It's still reading the data. You can kind of see it filling in the gaps there. So tell you what, guys, let me take a two minute stretch break. Don't go anywhere and we'll finish up. All right, friends, so here we are. We're knocking out some Echo of Seasons for Dark Dice. During the little break there, I just quantized the strings as eighth notes for this part. Let's see what it sounds like. might actually help is instead of eighth note quantization doing quarter notes it might help a lot and give some downbeats hey the coffee break music is my own thank you very much everything is my own here on the show um it's from lo-fi atmospheres it's one of my game music packs go check it out you can actually stream it if you want on all the things spotify youtube etc sounds so much better. This is good for any of these little chuggy passages. Not the legato stuff, but any of like the really rhythmic, it's great to quantize it as quarter notes because then it'll try to fill in all the gaps. That way only every downbeat feels mechanical, I guess. Last thing in the world I want to do is 16th note composition.
guess all of this needs to be quantized then. And that makes me actually think that the choir might do a better job if I select all of this and do quarter note instead. That might actually sound better and cleaner. Does not sound better. Try whole measures. So I still have a handful of tracks that I can't play because I'm over the track limit and I can't even do my overdubs. So here's what I'm going to do. If you can bear with me for a moment, I'm going to export all of the overdubs by themselves that way. Cause I don't really need that level of control, particularly in the, this section, the overdub twos. So just to save tracks, I'm going to, Disable all this stuff. I know it's a bit of a pain, but this keeps me from having to like do some weird Pro Tool subscription thing, which I don't want to do. Um, and then all I have to do is disable this stuff. Theoretically, if all goes according to plan, I can just solo the things I want to keep. It's a nice little workaround. So I'll keep. I will not do reverb. I basically just need stream overdub two. That's it. That way I can go in here and record the whole track. Shouldn't take too long, I hope. Just kind of get the whole shebang, shaboodle, which is this whole lot right here. We should be good to go. Might be a nice way. Hey, get out of here, Tommy Haru. Nice to see you. Go teach some lessons. But essentially all I'm doing here is I'm exporting uh, strings overdub two as one file. We're gonna do an offline, just like that. So in the meantime, let me answer some questions or something. It, it's going very fast, so you don't have to worry about that taking too long. In the meantime, uh-oh, <laughs> Press recording button to show. How you guys doing? What's, what's the latest? What's happening? Can you tell I'm tired? That's okay. This has been a fun process. So this is just, if you have a track limit, then consolidate. I don't want to mix a hundred things anyway. Um, if I had the option, yeah, I'd just leave it and, and be fine for the level of control. But because it's, this is such a minor part of the track, it's the overdub twos. Um, and the levels don't really change. I don't really need the the mixing flexibility that would come from that anyway. So all I'm doing is taking those 20 microphone positions, whatever, exporting it, and I'll throw it back in as one track. And if we still need more, we shouldn't, because I was only like five tracks short of 100 or over 100. I should be fine. But if I had to do that again, I'd probably just pick the string overdub two or overdub one and, and do the same thing. But... It's just a, a clever way to stay within your 100 track count because thankfully they at least let you make inactive tracks. That way they can kind of stay in your list. Um, this is crazy. <laughs> it's like forced paywall. 
so that you'll have the, the better version, but I've never had to. This is back when they had uh, Pro Tools HD. Uh, this is before the subscription days. We had to buy like the super duper crazy expensive version just so you could have more tracks, which is bonkers to me. Mm-hmm. Almost done. All right, there it goes. Woohoo! It's ready. Ready for action. So now, all I'm going to do is find said track. And I want to make sure it ends up in my stems. Otherwise, we're just going to have issues. There it goes. I'll just put it in my stems folder. Pro Tools is really big on keeping your folder structures. Otherwise, you lose stuff. So here we go. Uh, now I'm going to consolidate or not because I'm going to make inactive those things and hopefully in an ideal planet. Once I make everything active again. Again, I haven't had to deal with this before because I've never had live brass as well, which adds 20 some tracks that I, I didn't have. Oh no, am I still short? Jeez, I am. I didn't think I was going to have to do this again. Well, oh, dang, man. Okay, then let's do that. Let's do strings over to one. Oh, well, it's just part of the learning process here because I have so many tracks. So let's do that with, yeah, we'll do strings over to one. That should be the only thing playing. Let's make sure it works. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be totally fine, too. I've already done my little bits of mixing anyway. So, here we go. That looks good. It's all soloed. So now I can export just string overdub one. Annoying? Yes. Do I want to save the money? Yes. Because <laughs> there's no other reason. There's no other reason to keep, to, like, go upgrade to some crazy version of Pro Tools I don't need. Um, just to have access to a few more tracks, whatever. Um, to me, that's just a, a telltale sign I need to simplify anyway. Um, and all I have to do, since I muted the reverb send, once I import the new WAV files for overdub one, overdub two, all I have to do is put the send back on for those individual tracks. It's probably gonna be easier to control anyway. I think maybe in an ideal world, I would consolidate all of the stems. That way it's just one track for the strings, one track for the string overdubs instead of all this grouping, but it's okay. I like having that granular level of control if needed. Um, any, any mixing questions before we shut down for the day? Anybody, anybody? The goal right now is to finish up this track, which is called Echo of Seasons. And it's kind of a premier Sakimoto track. I think it's the most Sakimoto of the bunch. Um, and it has the strongest chance of winning a Grammy, I think. Um, this would probably go under the classical composition category or best choir album or best choir track, song, whatever they, they label it as. Because really the competition for those categories is pretty small. Um, there's no way we're going to go for best orchestral track. We're not going to go for best video game track or something that just, there's no way <laughs> there's no way I can't compete with Hans Zimmer and Austin Wintery and Barry McCreary and like there's no way um, nor should we there's no reason to uh, this has a very niche classical sound and I think that's so fun especially these cool choir moments so that's what we're gonna be pushing for we'll see what happens you know and I'd love to know, just while we're, we're sitting here for a minute, um, on the on the topic of mixing, what questions do you have? What, what do you feel like is a stumbling block or an obstacle when you sit down to mix? Have you mixed with It's 
ready. Our cake is ready. Make in active. So I'm going to keep my whole structure here, but thankfully I can just leave them there and they're not affected in any way. I can even hide them if I wish, but I don't want to hide them. I like to kind of mentally know that they're there. So what I'm going to do is create right here. Create two stereo tracks. One's going to be called strings over dub one strings over dub two. Um, let's make them an ugly aqua, <laughs> aqua color. All right, let's import. Oh, same thing. I got to put these bad boys in the folder. Stems folder that way they don't get lost. All right. So much organization work today. That's why everybody left. They're like, this is boring. But those of you sticking around, you're the real MVPs. You're the real reason I'm here. The people who care. Just kidding. People are busy, man. Got time to sit down for two hours and watch some dude mix. All right, here we go. Strings over to one, cha -ching, and two, cha -ching. Add them in, clip list, and bada boom, bada bing. We've now consolidated all the things. Just two lovely tracks. And I think it would make more sense to pop these guys up here with the oxes. Right there, and since I've effectively I'm no longer using these guys, I might as well just put them right there. Cool, that was a roundabout way of solving the problem, but it did solve the problem. Um, the only potential issue is if those uh, quantizations didn't work out too hot, but but looking back, I don't think I quantized anything except for the, f the, f the main strings anyway, so. It really shouldn't be an issue. I think that was a smart choice of if I could pick anything to export as a WAV file like that to consolidate those were the two because they took up so much space and there was little that needed to be done with them. So now I'm just going to throw my, my reverb sends back on them. Oops, there we go. And we should be golden. We should be ready to roll. Let's make sure they sound good. Yeah. Sweet. Everything sounds amazing. And now I have all of my stems that I can start mixing in. So I'm going to turn off my stems and just start throwing things in and having a blast. Let's get all my drums together. These are my three drums. I have orc chimes, harp. I'll start labeling them. So I'm going to do, yeah, just harp. Symbols, Armageddon Ensemble, low drum, toms, Rick chimes, snares, sticks, strings, colino, timpani, triangle. Now, the colino strings, I'm actually going to move all the way to the top because it's technically a strings, and I'm just going to mark them all the same. That way they get the same reverb treatment and everything. So it's, even though it's a stem, I actually need to remove it from the stem grouping because I do not want it to go. Here. There we go. Everything else is though. Um, and I think we're ready to start mixing some of these guys. So I'm going to kill all the dead space. So I can actually see what's happening. It's usually a good way to start is to just chop off all the dead space, all the silence you see. That way you only, like what you see actually sounds. 
having dead space is so annoying. It's just taking up frequency, space you don't need, and visually it's ugly. Now I can kind of go in and edit every little piece that I need. We should be good. All right. Let's make some music. Oh yeah, I want to test the Colina strings with the other strings. I have no idea how this is going to sound. Let's see. Modify groups, stems. I want to take off. I think we're ready. Ready for action. Here we go. Great. Uh, I'm going to start adding reverb sends to everything. I'm going to start low, really, really low, and add more as needed. So, like for the drums, I'm just going to add like negative 40. It's almost inaudible, the reverb. And then as needed, I'll start increasing the amounts to kind of fill in that space. So, this way, everything exists in that same room. but at different reverb levels and amounts. So timpani should technically be way up here. Timpani, well, I guess harp is percussion, so harp. Timpani, cymbals, drums, chimes should be higher. Um, sticks, triangle, it's all kind of orchestral. And now I can, I can go through each and edit a little bit. Yep, my uh, uh, percussion is sampled.
so pretty. Um, we're so close. Wish I had more time. I know we gotta wrap it up. Um, hammer dulcimer is too loud there. Turning him down a little bit. I want to try something with the mixing of the choir. If I if I can live without any EQ, I will be very happy. I don't want to use EQ if, unless I absolutely have to, because I love the natural sound of all these instruments together. Something I want to try with the choir, and I'll slap it onto the aux channel here. I want to try an imager. I used this on the entire soundtrack so far with choir. It seems to work pretty well. The S1 imager. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the soundscape of the choir and I'm going to shove it like wider. I'm going to make it wider. So you'll, you'll hear it in a second. That way the strings can fit right there in the middle. And I might do the same thing with your brass, to be honest, just to give it some more uh, width. Let's find a good choir spot that really could use some love. Maybe let's just, let's go to that spot right here. Oh my gosh. Can you hear the difference? Check this out. Let's uh, off and on. Wow. I already hear a difference. So here it is without. Absolutely gorgeous, right? As soon as we turn on the imager. So good. All right, so we have choir now, nice and fat. Let's do the same thing for brass. Perhaps we can make it even wider. I don't know if it can handle it. Let's just see what happens when we start to widen out the brass, allowing the strings to really live in the middle as they should, close range. Let's find a good brass melody spot right here. Maybe right here. Again. <laughs> I'll do this one a little, bit, a little bit more subtly, but I want it to be wider than the choir. So 1.3 seems to be the sweet spot. So it's about a 30% increase in wideness.
<clears throat> trying something with the Tom Holkenberg perk. I just think it's going to give some oomph. Think we're missing some of that lower end beefy brat, uh, beefy perk. I feel like that's just such a nice addition that we could add with all these other beautiful perk hits to give some oomph, oomphosity to an otherwise slight, slightly boring percussion moment.
Oh, gosh. Wow. I really love this track, and it's not it's not completely done yet. There, probably another 30 minutes or so. I don't have the time right now to do it, but I think tomorrow after taking a nice break from it, I think I'll be able to come in and just kind of tweak a few things and, and be done with it. But I think, I think I like what Micah said, adding that perk added so much. It just, those hits needed some kind of oomph, and I feel like that, that I that nailed it. Just adding a little bit of Tom H perk here on the bottom. Uh, let me solo it just so you can hear it. I just think that added a lot of oomph. Isn't that great? Before. With. Just adds more oof. Cool. And yeah, I mean. I rarely deliver a track on the same day I start it because my ears have to have a break to go back and tweak some things. So tomorrow I know for sure I'll be able to get it. So really from here, it's just kind of tweaking little levels and things and make the solo line stand out and, you know, make sure the panning feels good. And um, I don't think there's going to be any EQ on this. I don't think there's a need for it. I think everything really um, gels well together as it should in an orchestra, right? I chose the timbres of instruments to blend well. Um, the soloists, maybe I have to shift them around a little bit, but I don't think it's ever going to be an EQ thing. Um, that's like a last resort for me. Um, kind of like compression is just, uh, stay away if you can. Um, cool track. Really love what we have here. Um, and ear fatigue 100% is a thing that I want to avoid. So we definitely got to wrap up this party. Um, but from here, all I'm going to do is, um, finish, you know, volume type mixing and then in the master i'm going to throw on ozone one of you mentioned that earlier i think micah mentioned it and, and eric that um i'm going to use an ozone preset to kind of make it feel as analog warmthy as possible and then technically that is an eq one of the modules on there is an eq that i'm going to keep it as analog as possible i'll probably do a little bit of stereo imaging to help widen out the sound and that's probably it it doesn't need much i don't want to process this and make it sound overly epic trailer-esque I don't, that's not what i'm going for i'm going for organic for the most part a little bit of supplement and i don't think i'm gonna need any string stems to help supplement the the, the chuggy chug strings but maybe right now right now i don't feel it needs it but anyway let's call it a day uh thank you guys for being a part of this hope this you learned a thing or two about mixing large large orchestral sessions um, pain in the butt working with pro tools as far as like exporting stems, but you know what? It's okay. I'm really happy with what we have so far. This is not the finish line, but we're close. Keep an ear out for when the Grammy, um, nominations roll in relatively soon. Uh, we'll be submitting these suckers and seeing what lands. So, uh, when this final track is ready in the next few days or so week or so, I only have a week tops. Uh, I'll let you guys know, and you can definitely go listen to the final track and it's all of its glory. Um, I'm excited to get there. I'm like, I feel like I'm 80% there, but I need to spend another 30 minutes or so to, to get it to that finish line. So thanks guys for hanging out. Uh, I'll see you again, I hope, on Thursday for the Sea of Stars stream. It's going to be a lot of fun. If any of you are not inside VGM Alliance, come join our group. And right now there's a wait list right here, spam. And you get a free guide as part of that. Uh, you'll be the first to be notified of how to get inside. So take care, guys. Love ya. See ya in a couple of days. Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for hanging out for a bit. And I'll see ya later. Bye-bye.